Friends, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Ben George, and I welcome you to Christ Presbyterian Church. Whether you're gathering here in person or online, we are glad that you are worshiping with us today. This is Easter Sunday, a day where we celebrate the resurrection. And in just a few moments, we experience God's triumph over the grave in Christ Jesus. Welcome. Let us gather for worship. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
this glorious Easter day, let us pray together to the Lord who has risen. Holy One, you come with us to power beyond all knowing. You lift all things out of the dust. You breathe unto, into every cell. You call us into communion with you, and you claim victory over death. Blessed be your holy name, now and forever. Amen. Jesus rising from the dead assures us that we too have been given new life. Let us repent of our sin before God and one another, certain of God's mercy. All-knowing, all-powerful God, we confess that even on this most holy day, we are unable to believe in the victory over death shown to us in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We confess our utter dependence on you, not only for life, but also for faith, hope, and love. Without your astonishing appearance to our ancestors, and your stunning presence throughout the ages, we would be lost. Forgive us and transform us, that in every way our work and prayer will make whole what is broken and give peace on earth. Amen. Stand. By the grace of God, the good news of Jesus' resurrection is our rock and our salvation. You shall not die but live. The rejected cornerstone has become your strength and your song. As a call in the ministry of the Church of Christ, I declare to you the forgiveness. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, is one God who lives and reigns as mother of us all, now and forever. Amen.
Happy Easter. Oh, that was weak. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Oh, there we go. I'd like to invite any children forward to come forward if you'd like for the story we're going to tell this morning. So today we're going to hear about the first Easter, and I'm going to read a book. It's called Run and Tell. Run and Tell. One early Sunday morning, the sun not yet awake, some women walked together. They thought their hearts might break. Why were their hearts breaking? Anybody know? Because Jesus died and they were going to go to the tomb. Yes. They came to see Christ Jesus, his body in the tomb. Instead, they saw an angel outside the empty room. Christ Jesus is alive today, the happy angel said. Go quickly now and run and tell he is no longer dead. Run! Run, run and tell, Christ Jesus is not dead. He is alive, your sins are gone. He's risen as he said. The woman ran to tell his friends, but they were filled with doubt. John and Peter ran to see. They wanted to find out. They found the grave was empty now. His body was not there. They did not understand that this was the news that they were to share. Young Mary wept outside the tomb. She asked the man who came, but then she saw him standing there and heard him say her name. Who do you think it is? Jesus. Jesus. Let's see if you're right. He told her then to go and tell so all his friends would know. There was no need to be afraid. He wanted them to go. Run, run, run and tell. Your Savior is not dead. I am alive. Your sins are gone. I've risen as I said. You were right. It was Jesus. Then in the upper room that night, his friends all filled with fear, Christ Jesus came to be with them, all filled and filled their hearts with cheer. Run, run, run and tell, your Savior is not dead. I am alive, your sins are gone, I've risen as I said. This glad news is for you, too. God wants the world to know. Christ Jesus died to save us all. Don't be afraid to go. Run and tell. Run, run, run and tell. Our Savior is not dead. He is alive. Our sins are gone. He's risen, as he said. Let's pray. This is a repeat after me prayer. Dear Jesus, Jesus. thank you for coming back to life. And thank you for saving us. Help us to run and tell. 
to all of your children. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, kids, you're going to go back with your parents this morning, and we're going to get to see the rest of the service. If you haven't gotten an activity bag, um, they're by each of the doors. Make sure you grab one, okay? As we prepare our hearts now to approach God's holy word, let us pray for illumination. Open our eyes and soften our hearts, O God, through the work of your Holy Spirit, that in the hearing of your word we may receive new life. Amen. Our Hebrew scripture reading for this morning comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, the 25th chapter. Praise for deliverance. Let us listen now for the word of the Lord. On this mountain... The Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the covering that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people. He will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, see, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Beloved, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the second read the book of Acts, we hear the good news. Let us listen to the word of the Lord. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every people, everyone who fears him and practices righteousness is acceptable to him. But know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The, that message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God had anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who, are, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people, and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, our gospel reading for today comes to us from the gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. We hear of the resurrection of Jesus. Let us listen for the word of our Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. 
He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in. And he saw and believed For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not touch me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Sisters and brothers, this is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Ever since my children were born, my wife and I would sing hymns to them. And as they got older and started to learn to speak, I would encourage them to sing along, to fill in the blanks by giving me just one word at the end of each line. One song we still sing almost every night is, All praise to you, my God, this night. Oh, some people know it. For all the blessings of the light, keep me, O oh, keep me, King of kings, beneath the shelter of thy wings. Okay, you caught on, right? Okay. So night after night, they learn these songs one word at a time, enough to join in. And this last year, I've extended this practice to scripture reading. In the last few months, we have been reading through the Gospels with the children. And whenever I would come to a key word that I think they might be able to guess, I'll give them the first letter of that word and see if they can fill in the blanks. Now, most of the time, you would know that they are pastor's kids. <laughs> they spend a lot of time in church, and they're, they're, pretty, a- they're pretty able to do this pretty quickly and easily. Like when Jesus talks about the greatest commandments, he says, you shall love the Lord your, you can try this too, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your, and with all your, great. So they too can fill in the blanks. However, sometimes my kids provide me with hilarious answers. I was telling a story once about how Jesus was healing a man, and I said, Jesus healed this man who had lizards. (laughs) Very good. Thank you. I'll give you $20 later. Thank you so much. (laughs) We all had a good laugh. If you didn't hear, they said lizards. Yeah. So what I love about this practice is that it opens all of our ears, all of our imaginations to be a part of the story. And for stories that I'm familiar with, 
reading them alongside my children, hearing their creative answers, then filling in the blanks, makes me wonder, could these stories have gone differently? What other stories could there be? Are there some stories left untold? Did Jesus really ever heal anyone from a plague of lizards? I don't think so, but are there ways that we, mo we might more faithfully fill in those gaps? Now, I'm not sure about you, but when I read the Gospels, I yearn for even more of the story. I'm a details kind of guy. I want to know more about Jesus' childhood. What did he do for fun? What did he eat for breakfast? Of course, we can't always faithfully get to these answers, but sometimes, sometimes when we use our sanctified imaginations, we can fill in the gaps and recreate the story in between the stories. And that's why this year I have become so captivated by the song, His Heart Beats, by one of my favorite musicians and authors, Andrew Peterson. But before we even get there, we have to set the stage. How did we get here? Just who is this Jesus and what were the events that led to the cross? And does it even matter? In Acts chapter 10 that we already heard once this morning, the apostle Peter is sharing the good news of the gospel with a man by the name of Cornelius, who is a Roman centurion, a Gentile. Mind you, all of us are Gentiles, but these stories were first told among a Jewish population. And we need to, as we approach this story, we need to remember that Jesus had come only to the children of Israel, to the Jewish people. But now, in Acts 10, on the other side of Pentecost, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, the apostles were charged with sharing the gospel with the Gentiles, those outside of Israel. And here we read how Peter is sharing the good news with Cornelius. Again, a Roman centurion, a Gentile. A little earlier in the story, we didn't read it this morning, but, but Luke tells us in, in Acts 10 that Cornelius was a devout man who feared God. And that would be a clue that Cornelius already knows the Bible, at least the Bible of that day, the Hebrew Bible, what we call the Old Testament. And God, in God's sovereignty, brings Cornelius and Peter together in this moment so that Peter could fill in the gaps in his understanding. Peter summarized the gospel this way. God declared peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power. And in his life, Jesus went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God, God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear to us who were chosen by God as witnesses. And then God commanded us to preach to the people, to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets of the Hebrew Bible that you know so well, Cornelius, all of them testify about Jesus, about Jesus, and say that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. I think Peter does a pretty good job of summarizing the gospel for Cornelius and for us. But how do we know this? How are we even here? Why are we even here this morning? It's because of Peter and a long line of other witnesses who have shared these stories and passed them down to us through the scriptures. You see, Peter was a first-hand witness to Jesus' life, his teachings, his healing ministry, and during Holy Week this week, Peter was in that triumphant procession on Palm Sunday. He sat in the upper room for the Last Supper and a few hours later fell asleep in the garden, waking only to fight off the Roman guards 
who came to arrest Jesus. But then, but then Peter denied even knowing Jesus. He fled. Peter was a first-hand witness to all these things, but Peter was not the first witness to the resurrection. And as we consider Peter's proclamation, we have to ask ourselves, well, who filled in the gaps for Peter? How did he know about the resurrection of Jesus? Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene was a faithful follower of Jesus, while almost all the male disciples scattered and fled at the crucifixion, Mary Magdalene was faithful, and she stayed. And on the morning of that third day, as John tells us in his gospel, Mary returned to the tomb, hoping to anoint the body of Jesus with spices, as was the tradition. She anticipated having to find some strong men along the way to help her push back the stone covering the entrance to the tomb. But she got there, and it was already rolled away, and that filled her with fear. She ran to the disciples, to Peter, to John in distress. Has Jesus' body been stolen? So the, man, the men both run. They look in and they return home. But Mary stays again. She stays there weeping, perplexed, heartbroken. And two angels appear and ask her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she says, They took my Lord, they took him. A few moments later, someone else appears there in the garden. She sees another man, assuming him to be the gardener. And he also says, woman, why are you weeping? And she says, where have you laid him? I will take Jesus' body. If only you will let me, where is he? And Mary, distressed with tears streaming down her face, cannot even really see this man, look at him clearly until he says her name. Mary. Mary. And I imagine that she clears her tear-filled eyes, wipes her face, and looks for the very first time at Jesus in shock. Rabboni? Teacher, is it you? Is it really you? Mary Magdalene is the first to see Jesus after the resurrection. And she is the one who then goes to tell Peter and the other disciples, he's alive just as he said he is alive. So she has witnessed a miracle, the miracle of all miracles. Jesus, who once was dead, has now come back to life. A few days prior, she had seen the crucifixion, and now she was the first to see his resurrection. And as she walks, or I imagine runs, to tell the disciples, I imagine her head is filled to the brim with questions. How is this possible that he who, who was dead is now alive? What has God done? How is all of this possible? But the Gospels, the Gospels don't narrate these in-between miracle moments. So I invite us to, for a moment, use our sanctified imaginations and journey for a moment with musician Andrew Peterson, who helps us to fill in the gaps. You see, Jesus is still dead in the tomb. The stone covers the entrance, but in the darkness, his heart beats. His blood begins to flow, waking up what was dead a moment ago, and his heart beats. Now everything is changed, because the blood that brought us peace with God is racing through his veins and his heart beats. His heart beats. 
He breathes in. His living lungs expand. The heavy air surrounding death turns to breath again. He breathes out. He is word and flesh once more. The Lamb of God slain for us is a lion ready to roar. And his heart beats. His heart beats. I love this song so much because it has captivated my imagination and revealed those in-between miracle moments. And as I envision Jesus' dead body coming back to life, I imagine that that first beat of his heart echoed across the universe. As blood started racing through his veins, death lost its power. And as Jesus breathes again, he who spoke creation into being ushers in a new kingdom. His resurrected life speaks a new word of hope that we are saved from sin and death. So what does this resurrection mean for us? We believe that his heart beats and continues to beat and so too will our hearts beat. Jesus' resurrection means that we will one day also be resurrected with him. Just as Christ died, so will we die. And just as Christ is resurrected, so too will we be resurrected. This is the heart of the good news of the gospel. But as we read the stories, as we try to find our place in these stories, where do we fit? We must come to terms with the fact that we did not tell the story first. We were not the first at the tomb that morning. Ma many, many faithful servants and saints have gone before. They have passed down this good news to us from Mary Magdalene, Peter, the apostles, gospel writers, Paul, and Saints over 2,000 years, I'm sure if you had a moment to think in your own life, you could make a list of all those who have passed the faith on to you. They have helped fill in the gaps to bring you here, to bring you to faith in Jesus. But now that you are here, now that you treasure this resurrection hope in Jesus, look around Go ahead, look around. Not just here in this room, but around your families and friends and communities and neighborhoods. Look around. Who still has gaps in their knowledge, their understanding, their faith in who Jesus is, what Jesus has done? Who still needs the gaps to be filled in? We know that the good news of Jesus Christ is a story like no other. We don't read it and close the cover to the book and return it to the library unchanged because this good news has made all the difference. Yes, there were witnesses to the resurrection 2,000 years ago, but we too can proclaim that we have seen the Lord because we can testify in our own lives Everything Christ has done has made all the difference. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus have changed us for the better. And so now we, just like Mary, just like Peter, the other apostles, and saints through the ages, now we are called to fill in the gaps, to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. And as we do so, we hold on to this hope knowing that it is not just our hope alone, but it is our hope together. That even though we die, we trust that Jesus has shown us the way through death to resurrection. We believe that his heart beats. And one day, even after our own hearts stop beating, God's Spirit will come and make our hearts beat again. 
Beloved, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia and amen. The gospel read and the gospel proclaimed. Now I now invite you as a congregation to stand and together proclaim the faith that which we believe. This morning we use the Apostles' Creed. If you are unfamiliar with it, you can find it on page 35 at the front of your hymnals. Friends, I believe in the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated. And let us pray, giving thanks to the Lord our God. Eternal God, we praise you that your glory has dawned on us and brought us into this day of resurrection. We rejoice that the grave could not hold your son and that he has conquered death, risen to rule over all powers of this earth. We praise you that he summons us into new life to follow him with joy and gladness. By your Holy Spirit, lift us from doubt and despair and set our feet in Christ's holy way that our lives may be signs of his life and that all we have may show forth his love. Praise, glory, and thanksgiving to you, our God, forever and ever, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we are the blessed people. We have much to be thankful for in our lives and it is our opportunity to share and to give back into God's kingdom in our midst. Today, I invite you, if you are giving in person, if you are giving online, you can give through our website. There's also a QR code if you're online watching, you can give through that as well. We are people where we can share and give in mission to the work that we do. There are beautiful things in our community, ways that we get to share and work together, provide for those in our midst who do not have. And so I ask you to give as you are able.
um, and respond in unison, share the prayer of dedication. We cannot measure them all. You give us life itself. Our companion is in the world. Bless these gifts for the sake of those in need. In the name of the Creator, and sanctify One God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, we are the body of Christ, Christ Presbyterian Church. We strive to live this out together and be it as individuals as well. We have a variety of things going on in our midst. It's Easter. My goodness, it has come. I pray that you are having a beautiful time with family and friends in these days to celebrate the resurrection. In the midst of the life of the church, a variety of things coming up. I invite you to please check the website, cantoncpc.org, or stop out at the kiosk as well. See what's going on. There's a bunch of stuff. Uh, we have a variety of classes coming up over the next few weeks. Uh, on this coming Sunday morning at 9.15, we have our Westminster class welcoming Senior Jeff back. For those who got to meet him a few weeks ago, he will be back with us to teach a class. And then I believe the week following, he'll be here for one of our mission lunches coming up. Uh, and so check those out. If you want to get grow in your faith, learn a little more, that 9.15 class on Sunday morning is a beautiful time. But we also have a variety of Bible studies throughout the week. If you'd like to get connected, contact our church office. Find a time that works for you. You can even watch and participate online. It's amazing. Join as you are able with those. Uh, a few things going on in the midst of mission. Uh, our mission team is busy at work. A variety of things that we do in connection with Habitat for Humanity, uh, a poverty simulator coming up on April 23rd. I invite you to participate in that. Our food, clothing, and prayer ministry continues to do beautiful work downtown for a variety of folks. There's a lot of ways to get connected and to serve in our midst. I invite you to stop at the kiosk. There are a bunch of pamphlets out there that tell you all of the mission work that we are doing in this season. Check it out as you are able. And then um, we have a variety of folks who go out and visit. Uh, so if you are going into the hospital for a surgery or have something come up suddenly and you need a time of prayer, please let us know. Um, I will tell you, I, I, my phone occasionally rings when God calls, but if you don't call me and tell me you're in the hospital, I won't know. So uh, call us, let us know how we can be praying for you, how we can continue to reach out and help for you, and if you need a special visit as well. While that's being said, there are pew pads in your pews. I want you to go ahead and pick it up, pass it, and sign it. And if you need prayer today, if you need somebody to come and visit you, mark in there, make a note. If you're online, there's an online pew pad you can sign and let us know the same thing. We would love to hear from you, to know you were here today, and to be able to connect and pray for you as you need. A few more things I'll draw your attention to. We have a very active youth group, and I invite you to stop at the kiosk and take a look on the screen at some of the activities that are going on this summer, or check out our website. They will tell you as well. And for those who don't know, we have an incredible summer camp program. How many, how many people's lives here have been affected by Camp Wakanda at some point? And if your hand isn't raised, you're going to show up this summer and be uh, shaped. And, and, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but truly, if you uh, want to know more about our summer camp program, check out our website or stick around. There's a few people who might be willing to talk to you, I think, out there in the crowd. Uh, one more announcement that uh, many of you know that our broadcast has been going on on the radio for about 80 years. Is that right? 80 years, guys? 80 years. And this is our last Sunday on the radio. But it's because the Cathedral Hour continues on YouTube. We have uh, many people who connect with us live, watching our service participate. Some watch later in the day. And so if you are one that you're not able to be here on a usual Sunday, you can join us and participate with us live and in worship or as your schedule allows. I'm not going to say that normally, but as your schedule allows to participate in worship with us as well through YouTube. And so check that out. And if you, by chance, if you're listening online, listening at home on the radio, and you need help getting connected to YouTube or know somebody who does, let us know in the church office and we will help them out. Okay. All that to say... There's a variety of things going on in the midst of the body of Christ here at Christ Presbyterian Church. I pray you are getting connected and a part of it as we live together and share in the love that God has given us.
We go out to live this faith in the world. We do so singing, celebrating the resurrection. Let us stand and join together. Beloved of God, let us go forth in joy to love and serve God in all that we do. We are sent in the name of the risen Christ to go proclaim the gospel to fill in the gaps. And so may the God of peace who raised to life the great shepherd of the sheep make us ready to do his will in every good thing through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory now and forever. Christ is risen has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen.